Hello everyone, welcome back to part 4 of Fairy Dragon Fire Elementalist here at Ultraviolet 4. We're about to be heading into the Lair of Beasts. Quick update on our character. Uh, we're up to 4 pips of piety with Vahumit. He still hasn't offered us any high level spells. So all our spells that we've got, we've kind of mastered for the moment. Uh, so for that reason, if we have a look at our skill training, we're actually not really training many magical skills. We're training a bit of spell casting, but beyond that, everything else is defensive. And it's a general rule for skilling that you want to apply when you're playing crawl, and that's when you're comfortable killing things, work on your defenses. It sort of ties into another point that I've been trying to make, which is don't count on things. So, I mean, it's almost certainly the case that Vehemet is going to give us higher level spells uh, that we're going to want to learn at some point, and then we're probably going to want to train more uh, magic skills for them. But until he does, I don't know, we probably shouldn't hedge our bets because who knows what they might be. It could be... Orb of Destruction, which is a pure conjuration, so we just want to train that one. Or it might be, it might give us Bolt of Cold, in which case we want a completely different magic skill that we've never been into yet. So rather than guess, we'll wait and see, and we'll become more survivable in the meantime. Alright, so heading into Lair. Uh, let's stick our head in, have a look around, and then let's talk a bit about Lair. Lair is quite a dangerous time for a caster, and particularly if you're new to playing them, uh, you could very easily mess up here and die. So you might have sort of thought, oh yeah, I got, I got the hang of this whole fire elementalist thing, got through the dungeon pretty easily, or comfortably, uh, so I have no problems here. Uh, there are some new and... not different, but... <laughs> slightly different challenges here. So our tactic for fast monsters in the dungeon has been to use hallways to put down conjure flames. The problem here in Lair is that you don't have many corridors, if any. There tends to be a lot of open space. Combine that with the fact that you get whole packs of dangerous fast enemies here. I can think of wolves, they're quite dangerous, blink frogs are very dangerous, and then you just get singular fast dangerous enemies such as spiny frogs and also black mambas. And for those last two, they also do heavy poison damage. So if you have found poison resistance by this stage, which our character hasn't, uh, you're a bit more survivable here, but all the same, even if you have it, those two enemies are still very dangerous because as a caster you've probably got some combination of low AC and low hit points. So if you let things hit you, you're going to die very quickly. That's true of many things in Lair, particularly Hydras, but even just regular enemies like Komodo Dragons or even just these Yaks. Let's have a look. These Yaks can hit for up to 18 each, which Maybe doesn't sound like that much damage, but if you let three or four of them hit you at once, things can very quickly go south. So what do we do about that? Uh, the first thing is that I would say to you is, remember that you're a blaster caster, which means, in effect, you're a glass cannon. So your job is to blow things up before they get to you. If they get to you, it's probably too late and you need to be thinking about how you're going to escape the situation. Sticky Flame is still pretty good if an enemy gets adjacent to you, but uh, if you're going to Sticky Flame something and give it more than one or even two attacks, you're in trouble. So try to think beforehand, if a situation goes poorly, how do I get out of it? And if you see a situation that looks like it's about to go bad, think about getting out of it then, before it actually does. Because you don't have much flexibility once things go bad. A melee character is a bit more durable. You can be slow on recognizing a bad situation, but a fragile character you absolutely cannot. You let things go south and they will 
rapidly spiral out of control. So what have we got? What's our character got? <laughs> Unfortunately, our character's in a, a bit of a rough spot in terms of escape options. We've only found two scrolls of teleportation, which is a tiny amount. So yeah, teleporting, which is usually a pretty good play, is not one we're going to be able to make too many times. We've also got a scroll of fear, which is, I guess, another escape. No scrolls of blinking, those are also very good. Uh, we don't have any potions of heal wounds. Uh, not that that's a good um, escape tactic anyway, because in a lot of cases that's only delaying things, but still. We've got two potions of invis, they're pretty good. Uh, we've got lig, two of those, in case a black mamba or a spiny frog gets on top of us. But that's about it, so not a lot. So we're going to have to be very careful here. Which is probably a good thing for you because you can watch watch me, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, not be too rash here and then show you how it should be done. Alright, so we've got our, we've got our yaks here. Uh, if you've seen two yaks, that probably means there's a pack of many more yaks. Um, and because we've only just come down, so this is our only staircase here. Uh, oh, sorry, I accidentally hit my windows key and <laughs> minimize the game. Um, right, so if we leave Lair, this is the only way we're coming back in. It's our only staircase. So if we can help it, we don't want to attract lots of enemies here because the next time we come down, they might all be surrounding us at the stairs. If we bring six yaks, maybe a hydro or two, uh, we're going to be, yeah, it's not going to be very safe. So uh, for that reason, we're not going to throw out fireballs here because uh, it's really loud. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to all grabs them both, get a little bit of value. Here comes a, a third yak. And let's have a look at our spells. Um, we could we could surround ourselves in conjured flames. That's an interesting idea. I wonder if it's not a, a standard tactic. Uh, I wonder if they'd walk through it. I'm, I want to do this just for science because <laughs> in terms of single target damage here, uh, we've only really got level 1 spells. Uh, we could have learnt Mystic Blast, which I declined to do, uh, would help us here. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to try this one. These guys are just going to walk around it. <laughs> okay, well these two guys walked in. Alright, we can take two up. So having two yaks at a time is probably okay. But because we've stair pulled it, we can take them to a corridor. We can sticky flame them and then just kite them out. Okay. And so we've split the pack here. Hopefully these two yaks are the only two that have been attracted. Okay, good. We'll just keep stair dancing them to keep them apart. Alright, we can fight one yak. Yeah, good. Alright, and then let's get on with it. So, you should be looking for natural hallways and things. Well, not actual hallways, but features here where you can abuse things like Sticky Flame. Uh, and to that end, I'll say if you have managed to find a wand of digging, that can help you out a lot. Say you do get caught in the open against a pack of wolves. If you're near a wall, uh, well, here's a natural little kill hole. But say we're over here, and suddenly, suddenly wolves, uh, we could dig a corridor behind us, so then at least only one at a time could hit us. Okay, so here we found yaks, it's the same as before, we've seen one or two, that probably means there might be even five or six. We really want to back up and try to separate the packs rather than take them all on at once. Same thing. If it's one yak, I don't mind letting it get to us with sticky flame. We don't need to put the conjure flame down. Alright, well there are more coming, I see them. Yep, 
Yeah, many more. Oh, that guy went in. Okay. Well, if he's standing in the fire and he's sticky flames, he's going to die pretty quickly. So we won't back up. We'll keep him in the fire. All right. I, I talked about how uh, it's much harder to use conjure flame here in lair and then so far this floor has just been <laughs> little choke points in conjure flame <laughs> it happens uh, I wouldn't count on it though a porcupine is nearby uh, these guys are pretty fragile so you blow them up quickly but I want to point out to you that these guys are fast it's a monster that can sneak up on you because they don't they don't look too scary, but uh, they hit surprisingly hard for how friendly they look. Up to 16 damage, and then they're fast. So if you underestimate one, and then you decide you need to run away, um, surprise, you can't run, they're fast. <laughs> okay, we've got our first Hydra. Uh, I also want to point out to you about Hydras, is that they move a lot more quickly in water. Does it actually say? It just says it swims extremely quickly. Uh, oh, I didn't have beam here because I'm not online. Um, I think they move 60% faster in water. Something like that. The point is that if you ever have water between you and a Hydra, uh, you need to be aware that they're going to end up on top of you a lot more quickly. So in this case, what are we going to do? Okay, I see that we have a hallway here that can let us at least put down two flames in to make it walk through and then now we're going to start blowing it up uh, using our biggest spell something as dangerous as a hydro we don't care about the noise we just we need it to be dead so we're going with fireball okay well, that's going to get him all right a spell casting goes to 10 dodging to 9 um, did I set a target for spell casting? No, I didn't. How many spells do we have? 12 spell levels. Okay. Uh, I think we can turn that off then. 10 seems fine for the moment. And um, we're just going to keep working on our defenses. So we're focusing fighting for more HP. And then we're going dodging and shields. And shields is actually very nearly at 5.6, which is our buckler skill target. Hmm. Which... Might have to do some some thinking about a shield. Uh, we've been on the lookout for quite a while to get a uh, identify scroll. Hey, speaking of identify scroll, there it is. Because on our shopping list, we've got a slimy spear for only 168 gold. This might have the up poison that we're looking for. We're not idea. We don't want to wield it because it could be dangerous. It's a plus 11 spear. Uh, the piercing doesn't much matter, but it has MR and int plus 2. Okay. Uh, I want to say that this is... Let's have a look. Uh, using percent, having a look at our MR here. We can get another pip by putting on um, a ring of protection from magic. But with this spear, we could get a third one. And then our int will... At this point, doesn't really matter. Um... But it will help us as we try to learn higher level spells. So I'm going to start using that spear instead. As nice as getting the bonus damage of Repulse has been, um, ideally we don't have enemies mailing us anyway. So it shouldn't be a huge deal. And then we're getting extra MR and extra int. And then if we, if we do for some reason want to melee something, I don't know, there are situations maybe Maybe we run into a really early Zot trap and then we get, uh, what's that thing called? We get silenced. <laughs> uh, if that happens, a plus 11 spear will do decent damage. Alright, here's our first, first of the fast poisonous enemies that we were just talking about, a black mamba. Can buy for up to 20 damage and then they do a bunch of poison. And then they're very fast. Faster than Spriggans in fact. So, yeah. When you're trying to blow them up, you need to do it really quickly. We happen to have a potion of league in case it goes really poorly, but uh, fireball is a very good tool. Uh, 
These guys are pretty evasive, so they're hard to hit, but Fireball is not going to miss. So it, it's like a... See how quickly it gets on top of us? Alright, well we killed it in two. We're, we're hearing Croak, so let's back up. Okay, good. And then, uh, if it did get on top of us, what we'd probably do is throw a sticky... Oh, wow, okay. Well, here you go. What would we do if the Black Mamba did get on top of us? Uh, we would first of all use a Sticky Flame. Um, I'll just point out to you that we do have a Wand of Paralysis, and even with no Evocations training, we've got a bit less than a 50% chance to paralyze it. So that is an option that we could take, but we can still try to blow it up here. We saw it took two turns before, and that was without the Sticky Flame. So maybe we can even get it in one turn. So we're gonna go our Fireball again. Don't shoot it like that, you're gonna hit yourself. You can aim at the ground, such that the radius is gonna hit. And then we'll go again. All right, cool. Again, we're hearing croaks, let's back up to rest. That's just a random frog. All right, looks like there's a, I wonder if that's a vault over there. A bunch of frogs and some water. Yeah, this is a vault. Uh, speaking of hydras and water, uh, here's one. Um, interesting thing to note about hydras, they can't open doors. Um, so we can't even, we can't even try to blow this guy up because of the plant in the way. Sorry, that's really loud. Thank you, Contus. What we can do is close this door and then never have to deal with this hydra again. It's a, another good lesson. It's a it's a general crawl lesson, but you can apply it to your casters as well. You don't have to kill everything in crawl. Just there are things like this, you can just leave them alone. And another good thing, one like that is Roxanne, who's literally a statue that you can just walk away from. But yeah. Uh, and so I've X'd out the door using Shift X and then E to exclude it. So now our auto explorer won't take us in. And we just not have to worry about it. It's clearly it's clearly some sort of vault. You can tell it's been made by someone. Uh, it's symmetrical, there are doors, etc. We know we've seen there's a hydra with water around, so that's dangerous on its own. But then who knows what other scary things have been placed in here. So we'll just we'll just leave it alone and we don't have to worry about it. And if we really, really do want to do it, we can come back later when we're stronger and we're not worried about hydras. If you're a completionist or you're thinking, hey, maybe there's loot in there. Maybe there'll be the coveted potion of heal, heal wounds. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so we're on to layer two here. We got a message that there is an ice cave somewhere on this level. We have one scroll of magic mapping. Um, is that worth blowing? Um, maybe. Yeah, I'd say it probably is. Uh, there can be ice caves that could be very valuable for us. Um, there are some endings that give you magic books, so we could get some cold conjurations, uh, which would be interesting. <laughs> um, we also have access to a fair bit of protection from cold. We have a scarf of resistance on at the moment, and then we also can put on a ring of protection from cold to get two pips worth. So I'm gonna magic map. Uh, let's have a look around. If we're looking on the map, it's this, it's this yellow one here. Uh, you can see that, uh, which is closest to no stair, really. Uh, okay, so we've got snake pit is one of our layer branches. Hmm, so it would be that one maybe. Uh, but I don't I don't really want to fright fight a bunch of blink frogs. Yeah and a black mamba that's too scary. I'm gonna X that stair out too. We don't want to go down next to a whole pack of blink frog and a black mamba. Uh, that wasn't the stair we wanted but that's probably still okay. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, I was gonna try to avoid the snakes. Um, 
Could be a, a bunch of nuggets in there. I don't want to draw them out. Oh wow. Uh, what just happened there? Oh, we just got shafted for two floors. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Devs. All right. Uh, you can't do much about that. And what's what's really disappointing here is that um, this time that we're we're off the floor, um, trying to work our way back up, the ice cave is ticking away. So we might just straight up miss our ice cave opportunity due to this shaft. At least we didn't land right in the middle of a bunch of dangerous enemies, so that's nice. Uh, and next one upstairs, so it's like being shafted one floor, I guess, rather than two. Uh, another interesting thing happened there, and that's that Behemoth just offered us balls of fire. And this one we win or slam. <laughs> uh, if that wasn't obvious, maybe it's not. Um, so, looking back at our sort of genres of spells, so we said uh, a one mana spell is super useful for a fair dragon because it's essentially free. Then you want to have some sort of AoE, which we have with Fireball. You want some sort of single target damage, which we don't really have at the moment, but Fireball can kind of work like that. Uh, and then uh, we spoke a little bit about utility in terms of all grabs. Um, ah, which I just realized because we've got snake, we don't have the spider's nest where it's most valuable, but that's okay. Uh, okay, so they're kind of the categories, but I want to explain on it a bit more. Uh, when you talk about AoE, I think you always want to have some sort of a bolt spell. It doesn't matter which one it is, although. Uh, Bolt of Fire and Bolt of Cold are the two better ones. Um, what else have we got? Lightning Bolt, I don't like very much. It misses a lot. Venom Bolt, I don't like very much because um, it doesn't affect our poison monsters. And Bolt of Magma is a little bit funky because it's Earth, Fire, and Conjuration. Three skills, sorry, three schools is a lot to train, and it's really short range. Um, so the fact that we've just been given Bolt of Fire here in our fire school is amazing. So we're insta going to learn that. If this was just Bolt of Cold, so it was a first Bolt spell, but would make us train cold, I would very strongly consider it for the fact that having a Bolt is really powerful. And why is that? Yeah, so we've seen Fireball... Uh, doesn't really let us hit stuff once it gets adjacent to us. You can aim next to you, uh, but if you're in a corridor, that's not going to work. Uh, and then it explodes on the first monster in front of you. Whereas with a bolt spell, you can fire it down a line, down a corridor, you hit multiple enemies at once. It's particularly good at hitting summoners, um, if their summons are between you and the enemy, that sort of thing. So let's instantly get that. That's an amazing pickup, so thank you, Behemoth. And I'm going to put that on S. No, I've got nothing on X. With equals S. Okay, so we've got Bolt of Fire. And now let's try and get back upstairs. Oh, wow, okay, there's a stair right there. That's really fortunate. Uh, to see if we can get into that ice cave. Oh, boy. Okay, there's Sonia. All right, what does she have? Uh, we don't know yet. She's just shooting Kurari. Uh, she might have... Um, a distortion dagger, which is extremely scary. In fact, all her daggers are really scary. If you XV her, um, does it show you? Yes, she can hit twice for up, up to five damage and again for up to nine. Uh, so she hits three times every time she attacks. If she has a put, a, hmm, really struggling with names today. If she has a dagger of venom, you get really poisoned. If it's draining, you get drained really quickly. And if it's distortion, you're very quickly going to get a bisque. So this is extremely dangerous considering how close she is to you. To us, in fact. A uh, few things to note. Oh, I accidentally moved. I meant to hit X first so we could XV her. Oh boy. Uh, so what did she hit us with? A dagger draining. Okay. Well, at least it wasn't distortion. We might have just been banished then. Uh, so that was a mistake. Uh, have a look how evasive she is, extremely. 
So that tells you that Sticky Flame and Fireball are very good at killing her because she's quite fragile but hard to hit and neither of those can miss. But the other good thing is that she has really low MR. So with our Wonder Paralysis, she has uh, we've got a greater than 50% chance to just hex her. I don't like that play when she's right on top of us though. I think I'd rather try to kill her. Uh, so we're going to Sticky Flame first and then see how much damage that does in a single turn. Let's hit her with... Uh, we'll go with the Fireball. Uh, the Bolt of Fire might work, but she can dodge that with her evasion, whereas Fireball she cannot. Got her. Alright, good. Alright, and then we're really far away from the ice cave. I don't I don't love our chances of getting in there. Uh, you see that we're continuing to walk there when we don't have full HP and mono. Uh, and that's because waiting takes time. Time means it can run out. Alright, we've got two enemies here. We can shoot our bolt of fire through the corridor. We kill them both in one, that's pretty amazing. Um, I didn't see exactly what it went to, but our noise meter did make some noise. So, Bolt of Fire is pretty loud. We can actually have a look at sh with Shift I. Noise. It's a bit loud. But it's not like Fireball, which is very loud. Alright. Uh go again. We missed. Okay. We sticky flame them both and then kite. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I think we have no choice but to use fireball here if we're going to try to kill all these enemies and get into the ice cave. So here we go. Uh, let's throw out an all grabs as well. It's going to give us some value AoE on them all. One more. Alright, we did it. Go away, Macassans. <laughs> Alright, good. Uh, let's preemptively put our Ring of Protection from Cold on. Uh, because some of these... Some of these entrances to ice caves can be quite dangerous. Fortunately... Ice space are vulnerable to fire, so they're going to die really quickly. And are we lucky? Oh, it's still open. If we can get in. I'm trying to... Oh boy, there are a lot of things. Uh, in some ways, this isn't good practice because I'm allowing enemies to hit us. Uh, but that's because I'm trying not to use my mana because I know that we're, we potentially have a lot of enemies to face and we really want to get inside this ice cave. Um, at this point, oh man, there are even electric eels here. I feel like we may as well just go in. Uh, monsters can't follow you in. The danger is going to be when we come out though. We might, if all these enemies are still chilling here at the exit, we might have to teleport away. Oh dear, I hope this is worth it. <laughs> Uh, it looked like we were in a bit of trouble there due to running out of mana, but Vehement gives us mana back on kills, so it wasn't quite as bad as it looked. Um, these guys can go berserk, so I think I should stop messing around and just blow him up before he gets on top of us. Dodging to 10 is nice. Okay, and we managed to rest. Okay, let's see what we have. Uh, I was too quick there. Um, I could have placed it so that it hit both, but that was my bad. That's still good. 
Hmm. Went for the ball to fire, it missed. And that time it failed, and then it missed. Okay. Uh, yeah. I believe... Oh. I know it's the case for projectile spells, but I'm not sure for ball to fire, for bolt spells. I believe the accuracy of the spell increases as you get more power. Oh, I wish I had beam so I could say that for sure. But I think that's true. <laughs> okay, let's uh, back up. We're not picking up these potions of flight because we have innate flight already as a fairy dragon. Ooh, interesting. Okay, there's a shield of cold resistance. Huh. Uh, well we can we can kind of cheat. We've got our, our ring of protection from cold on. We could just fly in here, loot this stuff, and then fly out. Because we're, we're not supposed to be going in this way. We're supposed to be uh, fighting our way through like this. So let's grab that shield. Uh, there's no point picking up the halberd, even though it's an artifact, because you see it's grayed out here. It's too big for us to use as a fairy dragon. Um, and it's two-handed anyway, so it wouldn't work with a shield, even if we were, say, a draconian. Alright, so we found our we found our boss. Um, it's a frost giant. Uh, he has Bolt of Cold. Um, I'm thinking. We could have a go at... Yes. Oh, I should have let it walk one more time. Okay. I was going to say, we could have a go at uh, paralyzing... The polar bear he'd then block the ice giant from getting to us but because i put it i did it one turn too early he's not blocking the hallway uh so sh we should just be running um we could try to blow these guys up let's just see how much damage we do bolt call is missing us we have 25 evasion which is pretty good and we have two pips of rc if we had no rc I would not even be thinking about being anywhere near a frost giant, uh, but the fact that we have pretty good evasion and two of them, I don't mind kind of trying. We did pretty good damage there, so let's go again. Uh, I want to start backing up just in case. Uh, if he does hit us with a bolt of coal, we can step around the corner and then start teleporting. Hmm. Okay, uh, we put the sticky flame on him. We absolutely don't want him to have any more chances to melee us. Hits for 35 plus his um, Balax of Freezing. Oh wow, okay, so the wolf stepped in front, which is bad news for him because then we get a chance to. Um, we could aim at the wall here to get a fireball that would definitely hit. Yeah, I think that's worth it. Yeah, okay, well, we got him. Uh, so that's a bunch of good experience. I'm sort of violating what I just said about uh, not needing to fight things. Um, also, it's kind of scary. He went berserk and we didn't have any more mana. Uh, tip, pro tip, don't use sticky flame on enemies who are standing in water. It will put the fire out immediately. Uh, if it's an, en an enemy that can't swim, though, you can cheese them. <laughs> uh, and I feel like we may as well um, clear the rest of it. Even if there's not any more loot in here, we're getting free experience, which is always nice. Uh, I can't bolt all three at once, but if I step back, we can get them all in a row. Look at this value. <laughs> So the way that, yeah, let's have a look. Here's our, here's the range of our bolt spell. It's basically our full vision uh, when we have Vehement, giving us an extra tile range. Um, every enemy that you shoot a bolt spell through reduces your range by one. So keep that in mind. So we can shoot it through three enemies in a row. One, two, three. Yeah, I don't know, for the half a tile, I don't know if that goes or not. So maybe we could get four, but 
but it's certainly three or four. Uh, beyond that, it's not going to help you. Uh, these statues don't regen, so you can take your time killing them if you want. But we'll get them pretty quickly with fireball. back off. I'm being kind of lazy, but um, if you're playing properly, you should be backing off to rest after fights, especially after you've been casting fireball to attract other enemies to you. So many polar bears. Uh, no, that's not quite it. It's one more statue, we may as well kill it. What's cool about Fairy Dragon is um, at this point on a, on a different character, uh, a level 6 spell like Bolt of Fire would probably be causing significant hunger. But being hungerless, we don't have to worry about it at all. And just spam it as much as we want. And then let's get out of here. Oh yeah, I just realized, uh, when we get out of here, it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> We're about to maybe meet a bunch of things. Alright, so before, before we do that, let's talk about our shield that we just picked up. Uh, we just got a shield of cold resistance. First of all, let's try it. Maybe it's a plus 8 shield. No, it's plus 0. Okay. Um... And then let's have a look at our spell success. Quite amazingly, uh, our spells are pretty good. Uh, it's 12% for Bolt of Fire to fail. Um, and let's have a look at the actual shield itself. Uh, it requires 21 skill to get rid of the penalty. So we are talking about a very, very large commitment to remove it completely. But as we can see here, uh, we maybe don't need to completely remove the penalty to be able to use it, um, to still use spells. But I don't know. So this is kind of, this is not necessarily an easy one. I want to say the fact that we have a pip of RC already from our scarf means that I'm not, not as desperate to get more of it. So. If you didn't have any RC, maybe this shield would be extra appealing to you. Uh, but even still, uh, we could wait. I think I'm erring on the side of not training the shield just because 21 is really high. But we can wait and see. And the reason I say that is because um, as we keep going through our piety here, Vehemet's going to continue to give us spells. And ultimately, once we hit six pips of piety, he'll give us three spells that we can learn for the rest of the game. Those are likely to be pretty high level spells, in which case, say he gives us Firestorm, it might be something to think about. And in that case, there's no way, well, I'll preface that a bit. Generally, a level nine spell like Firestorm in a three rune game is a really big investment that I'd say most of the time you don't need to do it. But if you combine that with trying to get a shield to 21 skill when you have a minus 3 shield aptitude, yeah, I don't think that one's ever happening. So we'll wait and see. We'll see what Vehement gives us and then maybe we'll train the shield. But still probably not. Uh, in the meantime, could we wear this? I don't think so. Uh, Bolt of Fire being red and at 12% is still probably a little bit too dangerous. Maybe we could just train... How much extra shield is this, is it giving us? We're at 18 at the moment. The buckler was 15. Okay, no. Uh, the, the three extra shield points that we're going to get from that when we haven't trained shields, I don't think is worth the fact that it will mess with our spells. So let's not. Um, what are we going to do when we get out of here? Um, hopefully not teleport. We might need a fear, maybe. Let's go out and then we can assess. Oh boy, we take a, a bunch of shots from the electric eels here. Uh, okay, It's only 
It's the water macassans, macassans, that are fast um, and scary. The adders are fast, but we don't really care about those. That bother us here. Um, although, hmm, the play, if we were going to run, the play would be to run up and left. And as we do that, these double electric eels are going to continue to slam us with bolts. What are they? I really... If we had a normal amount of teleportation scrolls, I would immediately hit it. And it would be like I explained at the start. I mean, the situation is pretty bad already, but um, like you can see here, just looking at the screen, how many enemies are on it, considering that two of them are adjacent to us and they're both fast. Uh, you can see that this could very quickly go bad. So you should be trying to run from it. Um, yeah, but with two scrolls of teleportation, it's such a high price to pay. And then we don't even, it doesn't even guarantee us that we escape from this. Um, our one scroll of fear is probably better to use, in fact. Hmm. Maybe... I'm willing to go one more tile up left. Um... If we get lucky, because the, the electric eels don't want to shoot other monsters, so if we step up left, there's a chance the water moccasin uh, steps behind us such that the eels don't want to shoot us. And if we are willing to use a scroll of fear, that's a, almost guaranteed, it's basically guaranteed to work on all these monsters. Maybe not the Komodo dragon, but um, that's a regular speed monster, so... Oh, that's not too bad. So let's move one tile and then if we are getting electric bolts to the face, I will re fear the next turn. Okay. Um, we did shoot, but they missed. All right, so what do we do here? Uh, we probably just sticky flame them both. Definitely don't get hit by uh, three things at once. Uh, have a look at a Komodo dragon. Bites are up to 34 damage. That's a huge amount. So do not let those guys hit you. Alright. Um, and we can... I saw it. We can bolt a fire these three guys. Oh, and these. Perfect. And we can... Amazing. <laughs> Fireball of those. Okay, so that, that kind of worked out. Um... I feel like if you're new, well, okay, in your game you probably have more than two scrolls of teleportation. So you should probably, in that situation, just immediately teleport and not even risk uh, the insanity that we kind of had to go through there. But yeah, I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit more. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, okay, uh, we've got full screen. Fireballs, nice. Uh, fire is extremely potent against eels because the steam clouds that you make kill them afterwards as well. And I aim at the ground. Yeah. So uh, even if you just have a wand of, well, you're a fire elementalist, but if you're a regular character, just having a wand of flame is really strong against them. These fireballs just dragging more and more enemies in. Uh, and we're running out of mana. It's a bad place to be in as a caster. So I'm going to go back up this hatch. I'm just going to check those. Oh, yeah, no, this is a bad floor to take a hatch up. Because uh, it could take us inside here. And I really don't want to be in there with no mana. So, okay, never mind. That's why we checked. You do that with Shift X and then the brackets, uh, square brackets to go up and down floors. Uh, so we see that we really don't want to, um, we really don't want to hatch up. All right, so what do we got? We've got a plus 11 spear that we could hit with. Uh, that's one thing. We also have one charges, 48% uh, chance on disintegration one. So we'll just shoot that. And if we can kill the blink frog, Behemoth's going to give us mana back. See, we go to five. Uh, so we, 
Can sticky flame again, but we got more blink frogs coming. Well, it's the same thing. We kill the water moccasin, macassin, and we'll get mana back that way too. Yeah, so we get more sticky flames. All right, and of course, wait, what am I talking about? We never run out of mana. We have um, free spells, of course. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm crazy. Okay, so we're still alive. We had a, a fun, fun adventure there. Backslash, backslash minus. Let's see what scrolls. We don't know. A lot of scrolls, in fact. Um, and some of those are quite useful as panic buttons. Blinking, summoning. We have a lot of potions too. Yeah, so even if, even if we find identify scrolls, we've got so many potions to go through that we're never getting to these, so I'm just going to read it. It's summoning. Okay, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, that is very helpful in a bad situation. New book. What do we get? Ah, speaking of um, ice spells. Okay. So they go in our hidden list. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a summoning spell. We spoke about those in the first episode, I think, or I hope I did. Uh, they don't work too well with a blaster caster because your summons tend to get in the way of your destructive spells. Not a lot of synergy. Uh, we've, got, we've got our level 1 spell, which we don't really need. Throw Frost is like Throw Flame. It's your slightly more expensive but full screen spell. Uh, throw Icicle is single target damage. Um, not too interested in that one. Same reasons as IMB. Um, it's not... Throw Icicle is better than IMB. Um, because you can slow cold-blooded enemies. But we can kind of... The fact that we have Fireball and Ball to Fire means I don't really want a single target one until we're talking about the higher damage ones, like maybe Iron Shot and so on. And then Ozakubo's armor, which is interesting. Uh, let's let's talk about that one. Put it on our our show list. I just wanted to look at it. Okay, so this is a a charms charms ice spell. Uh, gives you protective armor. Huh. Oh no, this might not be updated. Ah, uh, okay. So, hmm, interesting. I don't know. <laughs> well, since this description was made where it slows your movement, uh, the spell has been updated. So one or two things might have happened. Uh, the devs might just not have updated this description properly, or it might be the case that uh, this version with Fairy Dragon in it doesn't incorporate that change. Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to say probably uh, the change isn't in this one. Okay. But, okay. So, for Ozakubo's armor, I didn't like it very much when it did slow your movement. So what it does is it gives you a bunch of extra AC if you have light armor. In the case of a Fairy Dragon or a Draconian, you have literally no armor. So you can always cast Ozakubo's armor. Uh, so it's a pretty good pickup for extra AC. Um, as I was just saying, I didn't like it with the slow movement speed because it meant that uh, if you did need to run away, you no longer had the option. And walking away from things is very strong in core. Uh, so how does it work now? Uh, if, you, if you move, the armor drops off, which if that were the case here, I think I would pick it up. But because I think that this is the old version that I don't like as much, we're not going to. Uh, and this would fall under the, the utility class of spells. It's not helping us um, kill things, but it potentially can help us survive. So in this case, more AC. Other spells like that would be the Blink spell, very good one. Um, Passage of Galubria is another good sort of escape tool, things like that. Mephitic Cloud is a pretty good one because you can confuse enemies and so on. Uh, there is a staff. Hmm. Oh, hello, Electric Eel. 
get fried. Uh, Vehement just gave us knowledge of Freezing Cloud. We'll have a look at that one. Okay, Freezing Cloud. Uh, note that it's a three spell school spell. Conjurations, Ice and Air. Two of those spells we've never trained in terms of Ice and Air. Uh, it's at 38% failure and it's a level 6 spell, so it's pretty high. Um, this, this spell uh, summons, well not summons, but it creates a bunch of clouds of freezing, you might say. <laughs> They're cold clouds. Uh, it falls, falls under the AoE um, umbrella that we've been talking about. I think that overlaps with Fireball in a lot of ways. I don't think we need both, so we're not going to learn that one. So thank you, Vahumu. Nice try. Um, have a look. We cannot wield the staff with the shield due to our small size. So I don't mind having a look at the staff. Let's drop our regular shield. If we we're going to use a shield, we're definitely going to use cold resistance over it. So I'm going to take off the buckler, and we're just going to see what this is for science. Staff of air. Okay. Uh, not a big deal. Maybe if we wanted to do something cheesy with deflect missiles, we could use that stuff over there. But we're, we're not really casting air spells except for shock, and that's already at full power anyway. Uh, definitely not worth losing our buckler for. We've got two ID scrolls. Let's go potions. Heal wounds. Yes, finally. Got it. And cancellation. Alright. Um... He's sort of oddly positioned such that we can't fireball him around the plant. We can try to hit him with, yeah, the bolt, but he's evasive, so we missed. Sticky flame. And we hit the ground. Alright, that's our layer 2 done. I think... Oh boy, there we go. I think we'll stop this one for now. Hey, there's a... that's interesting. There's an artifact amulet that we've just come across. So this could be amazing <laughs> or very disappointing. But yeah, we're going to leave this one here for now. So I think Lair's going pretty well at the moment. We had some sketchy situations that revolved around getting shafted and then afterwards trying to rush to the ice cave and then leaving the ice cave. But beyond that, it hasn't been too bad. Uh, we've been pretty successful at blowing things up before they get on top of us. And then uh, when they have been getting to us, we, we've never been surrounded. It's only ever been one-on-one, -on -one, really. Um, Sticky Flame has done good work. So yeah, pretty happy with how this is going so far. Uh, and the next one we'll be trying to finish off there. There's still one of our branch endings that we're not sure about. We got Snake instead of Spider. And then we might have either Swamp or Shoals. So hopefully see you back for that one.